What is up, guys? Jake from One Hive. You asked for it. You got it. I am here doing a recap with your boy, Power Bang. Power Bang, what's going on, man? What's up, Jake? It's uh, good to be here. Uh, Power Bang from Power Bang Gaming. If you uh, guys don't know about it, representing the clan, Wiz on her face, and we just had an epic war uh, with One Hive. Absolutely. It was a lot of fun. Uh, this was for our 200th attempt and we did, we did get the win. It was a fun war, uh, really a memorable war. It's always good to go up against another fair play clan that has good bases, good attackers. It's one that uh, I think we'll always remember our, our 200th. Definitely. Um, for us, you know, it was a kind of a milestone in itself. Uh, we knew that uh, One Hive was going for their 200th win. We were trying to stop them. Uh, but at the same time, uh, over at the Power Bank Gaming channel, we just hit 25,000 subscribers, and that is what caused me to want to reach out to One Hive in the first place in order to uh, go ahead and get this matchup because we knew it was something that viewers were really wanting. I don't know about you, Jake, but I get asked, you know, literally uh, probably every week at least, uh, multiple times, <laughs> play One Hive, play One Hive. So we wanted to make yeah. that happen. Yeah, guys are always throwing names out, you know, who they want to see us for and stuff. And your, your clan has definitely came up in that conversation. So it was just a matter of time until we got it done. Uh, and again, it was something special for our, for our 200th win. So I do appreciate you and all your clan members doing it, uh, coming, you know, agreeing to the war. Uh, it was a lot of work put into it. Obviously, matching up is never really easy. You got to crunch the numbers, do all that stuff. Uh, but a really quick matchup. We got matched up in like seven or eight minutes. So that was nice. And uh, you streamed the, the entire war, basically. I think you slept <laughs> for, what, three hours? Yeah, I took about a three-hour break. Uh, started out at 5.30 Pacific time, so my time. Uh, streamed until about 4.30 in the morning. Took about a three-hour nap and then picked up again about 8 the next morning and then uh, finished it out. Wanted to kind of get everybody all the attacks. And basically, after our Indian counterparts did their first attacks, I was like, it's a good time to take a break because most everybody's sleeping anyways. Nice, yeah. All right, well, let's get to the war. Um, you guys, again, I thought you did a really good job. Let's, I'm just going to scroll through. You can do it on your end as well. Scroll through your bases, what, uh, or excuse me, our bases, what you guys did to our bases. Uh, your Town Hall 10s brought it. Uh, I think, I, I'm not sure if you even, if it, any of them actually failed an attack. They all were two stars. If not, maybe like one of them uh, took a, a second try, but pretty much they got cleaned up almost immediately. So that was, that was impressive. Thank you, thank you. Yes, we uh, we were able, that was kind of part of our strategy was to, to go after your 10s first. That's typically been a weaker spot. Um, in our, you know, lineup, our 10s, uh, you know, we've been struggling a little bit on some of the, the ring bases that you guys have brought. They're trickier than they look. You know, they're not visually attractive, but they, they tend to work with that defensive ring pushed out from the core and uh, golem circling. We did fail on a one first attempt on your number three base, and uh, that was due to a wall breaker UI fail. So um, what are you going to do, right? Yeah, well, and and again, awesome job to your tens and and your nines. They, they was there were several three stars. I know that you guys struggled some with uh, some of our bases, but as we talked about before we started recording, um, you know, fair play clans. We don't get we don't get these these opportunities as often as we need them to practice on these bases from top to bottom. When you go up against a clan that has legit bases from their top town all nine to their bottom. Uh, it's tough, you know. It really is. You, any little thing can go wrong, and it's gonna it's gonna screw your attack up. Absolutely, and uh, you know, to go over, uh, you know, your town hall nine play was phenomenal. Um, we knew coming into the war uh, that we were outgunned pretty heavily as far as like the heroes go, um, but we didn't really care. We we wanted to go up against even, um, you know, even town halls because every war matchup right. that we've had lately has been us against three times as many town hall tens, and we just don't get the practice that we're needing. And uh, really, props to your guys' Town Hall 9 bases especially, because they were phenomenal. It's something that we don't always see. Um, a lot of them were very anti-air, which is difficult to do. And it really, you know, kind of put a damper on our Laloon plans, and uh, you saw mm -hmm. a lot of hogging this war, so... Yeah, definitely on both sides, a lot of hogging. Well, I'm, I'm switching over to uh, your bases and looking at what we did. And, and our Town Hall 10s obviously did not uh, do as well as yours. Uh, I, won't, I won't take all the credit. I mean, it's not all their fault. They did have to come down at the end of the war... Uh, when you have Town Hall 10s that, like, we didn't do what you did, obviously, and, and get them on the first try. Uh, but when you have those Town Hall 9s that are not cl completely cleaned up, some of them did drop down to get those. And you just take the easy stars, you know. You take the low-hanging low fruit when you're in a close war like this, and that's what we did. So uh, they, there was some Town Hall 10s dropping down to 3-star, to and because of that, leaving some stars up there on the top open. Absolutely, and and that was the smart play, though, to be honest, because I felt mm -hmm. like if your Town Hall 10s were going to continue to go after our 10s for one extra star, uh, we probably would have won the war, simply because we had the Town Hall 10 help to come down and help out right. on the 9s, and, uh, you know, we were hoping that you guys were going to continue to bang away on our 10s, you know, whether it's successful or unsuccessful, 
and uh, you know, hopefully we're able to, to make up some ground like that. But unfortunately, uh, didn't go our way this time. But either way, uh, we loved it. Let's go ahead check out some attacks, Jake. Let's start with you yeah. on uh, shoot. Where were we uh, going to start? Uh, let's look at hold my beer hit number nine because I, I I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. I love hold my beer's attacks. There's just something about the way he attacks. It's always so smooth. Sometimes you see people attacking and you can you can sort of feel the panic in their attack when they're doing it. It's herky jerky. His is just like he's you know gliding through the water. I mean everything about it is timed right. There's no panic involved in it. Uh, so I definitely wanted to show one of his. I think he this was his only three star this war, but he's been knocking out six star wars like crazy. Uh, just dropping a golem down here. And this is one of the, the things about this attack that I like the most. He drops his golem on both sides, backs it up with his wizards, and then his queen and starts creating his funnel. But what's important about this is I see so many people, and I'm guilty of it sometimes myself, is sending those wall breakers in too early. Because if you don't if you get those golems moving in, all you're going to do is draw more fire and maybe draw out clan castles prematurely. If you let them, if you let delay that just for a little bit, it really cleans up the area and they end up taking less damage. Because you'll see right here, the CC troops are coming out. Now there's nothing for the queen to attack but those CC troops. Had he done it quicker, the CC troops would have came out quicker, but the queen would have still been working on all those defenses. She's got to be right on top of that. Absolutely. Uh, for, yeah, for her to, to target those CC troops. Otherwise, she's going to be shooting everything around there. Another thing, too, with uh, with what you were saying, dropping on those wall breakers too soon will cause those golems to redirect, and you'll lose your tanking for the wizards, which could step up and take out those point defenses. And I love this set of hogs that he sends on the bottom here. You see one double bomb already triggered there. Uh, that's a pretty aggressive uh, trip for the see, for the queen kill. But when you have those higher level heroes, you can do that. You know, you can get, get away with it. That level 30 king out front. Uh, you can go halfway across the base to get that queen. So really good job of doing that. Taking out a lot of the base with his kill squad. And then, again, Hold My Beer is just so good at his hog deployment. Everything's spot on. He's very patient with his heals. Uh, I tend to get a little bit antsy with my heels. Uh, he just waits till the last possible moment, keeps them hogs up, and you'll see that there's only one section of defenses left. The hogs are dealing with that. Uh, cleanup is well underway. A couple of wizards down low, perfectly placed. They're just going to wrap around the base. Uh, and as soon as these hogs take out those last few defenses, it's it's over. Absolutely. Uh, shout out to Hold My Beer, too, man. It's uh, It's always nice to have your 28th guy in the lineup have max heroes, pretty much. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he, you know, Hold My Beer did a little... He, he broke out the credit card, but, you know, that's nothing wrong with that. That's part of the game, and uh, he decided early on he wanted to, and he's capable of of hitting those higher-level bases like that. He does it more and more out for us, so shout-out to Homo Beer. He's yeah. a beast. Uh, not, a, not a dig right. on him at all, man. It's, uh, no, it's no, a, yeah. he, Basically, it's a smarter way than I did, you know, leveling my base. So uh, yeah, it's, he's, sure. he's able to do a lot more with that. So very nice raid from Homo Beer. Yep, crushed it. All right, man, what do you got? All right, let's start off, uh, you know, our Town Hall 10s performed so well. Let's take a look at, uh, let's go over to our side, take a look at, uh, I believe, number six. This was an attack by BMG. Now, a lot of our, I'm going to click the play button here. A lot of our uh, uh, guys basically use similar style attacks with the Earthquake spell. And I'm going to put out a guide on this um, in the videos to come here on my channel. Uh, but what you see here is up top, he's just basically going to clear out some percentage by dropping a giant and uh, some hogs behind, clearing the, the outer buildings there for archers to snipe uh, uh, some percentage points. And then uh, you see the quad quake come down on the left, and it opens up a path right to the town hall. So there's really not a lot that has to happen there uh, for him to you know get his troops funnel to the town hall to pick up the you know the guaranteed one star. And then after that, it's a percentage game. And and you know as this is a you know a fair play war. Uh, we don't have but one attack on this base, and we're not going to try to go for three on a you know an anti three star dragonflower base. Uh, so he's basically going for the sure two, and that was our strategy coming into this war was to get the sure two on your town hall tens, and then hopefully drop down to take out some of those maxed hero town hall nines. Yeah, that's a good strategy, and and the you know I've been very outspoken about how worthless I said the. Uh, the quake spell was but i have also always said it has a place for two star attacks it's just too expensive for a three star attempt but for a two star it definitely has its place in war especially at town hall 10. definitely and you'll see uh our guys in this recap uh, i'm only going to show one town hall 10 replay but um you know most of our guys came with the quake spell and like you were saying it, it doesn't really have a place in three star attacks the jump spell is going to save you that extra spell that you need on the back end of raids but when you're only shooting for the front half of the base to get that 50%, it 
you don't really need uh, the extra spells. So as you'll see here, right. uh, he heads in uh, with his golems. He gets that funnel created on the bottom side with the wizards. The P.E.K.K.A.s and the heroes go straight at the town hall, and it's literally almost the first thing they encounter. So yeah, the free no, spell goes no down. Question. That town hall is going down in two seconds. Absolutely. Free spell goes down to take the queen and the inferno tower. Um, so he's basically, you know, eliminating the biggest threats um, in the center of the base. And then doing a push here. And then if you check the bottom of the base, he's got the archer going. Um, he's got, uh, most importantly with BMG's raids, he holds back a giant, some wizards, and some archers. And he's holding that back for percentage. So you're going to see that giant come down here any second to pick up the last little bit of percent on that top right side. And uh, some wizards and archers behind, and he's going to get that uh, extra percentage he needs to get the 50, no problem. Yep. I like it. I like the combination of the, of the Quake spell. Like you said, you, the whole thing is getting to that town hall, and, it, and when you do that and it makes it easier on your troops, you can almost invest less in it and save more for those extra percentage points. Because I've said, you always got to have a few troops left over, for because more times than not, you're going to need a few extra percentage points at the end like that. Awesome. Well, uh, pretty easy two-star from BMG. He did... Uh... Few taxes war, same same style with the earthquake spell, and uh, you know shove the troops in there and got the the easy two for our guys, and uh, you know moving on to the next one, Jake. What do you got? Nice, nice. Let's look at Lala taking on your number twelve uh, Venu. I really like this raid. Gonna go ahead and start it up. Uh, you know most of what you're gonna see, I think maybe even all of what you're gonna see here is uh, is Goho from us. It's sort of it's the meta right now. It's what's working. It's what's, uh, you know, like like you talked about in some of our bases, sort of being anti la Luna. It's with a second sweeper and some, you know, just figuring things out, you can make a pretty tough base to la Loon. Still, if you got the right attack, uh, the right plan, hogs, and eh, you're you're pretty much, you can take any base out. So our guys are really focusing on that, and Lala brings a really nice one here. Sends a few wall breakers in. They did have a, a trap there, so it was a good thing she sort of sent a few and then held on. Sent the next group in, uh, the golems reroute, and here come the CC troops. Again, with the, with the sort of waiting on that, because now the queen is right there. It, I see it so many times that people just sort of send those golems in, they get too far out in front, and the queen's not targeting those balloons or dragons or whatever's in there. But you see Lala did a nice job of waiting until they, they were all sort of grouped up before. That rage uh, spell was nice, too. That caused those golems to take off and run away from the balloons, yeah. so they didn't do any damage at all. Yeah, it was perfect. The jump spell was perfect. And again, our guys with those higher level heroes being able to take out a, take a pretty long walk to get to the queen, taking out a bigger section, a uh, better chance of triggering bombs. I love this hog right there. If you'll see it beating on that air defense right by the town hall, because right here, check it out. Boom, double bomb, one hog. Uh, Cheap that's, one. that's huge. Yeah, that's huge. And then it's just working that, that motion around the base, uh, sort of reinforcing those hogs. You see the major threats are gone. The queen's dead. The CC troops are dead. Three of the four bombs are dead. Uh, right there, a nice poison spell on those uh, skeletons. So take that out. Uh, the queen's still up helping out. So just absolutely crushed it. Really, really nice attack. Definitely. I thought it was really nice that the queen came back and got that expo first because I thought the hogs might have gotten in yeah. trouble without having a, a heal left in the bag there. But uh, she did a good yep. job clearing out that center yeah. part for him. And keeping that, keeping everything out in front, tanking for a queen till the very, very end. You see right here, the queen just makes it through the raid. Uh, we'll start to fast forward because all that's left is clean up here. Uh, but, you know, I just thought it was, we had a balloon left up there, too. I'm not sure what the plan was for that, but uh, just a really nice attack. Again, be, coming at the right angle, you know, a lot of these three stars were cleanup attacks, so we knew where traps were, stuff like that. So you could really make a plan to uh, to maximize your kill squad, get those not gi giant bomb spots eliminated, and get in there and get uh, get the three stars. So good job, Lala. Definitely. Very nice raid, Lala. All right. All man. right. Bouncing over to uh, your side of the map here, we're going to take a look at number 11 on Lord Byron. This is an attack uh, by Venu. He was mad that he got three stars, so he thought he'd drop <laughs> some uh, retribution. Um, but this raid, I, I really like this raid. Uh, this is, uh, I believe it's a, a Shattered Goho. He comes in with the two uh, golems on the right side here and then creates a nice wide funnel with his wizards, uh, drops the Archer Queen in the middle uh, like normal, and then adds a few witches there to reinforce because it, it is, like you said, going to be a pretty decent push to get that Queen on the other mm -hmm. side. Yep, yep, I cool. like that. I like the those the witches are sort of like a regenerative tank, you know. It, on the right bases, they're they're more effective than than the third golem sometimes. Yes, definitely. Um, very nice jump spell comes down though, uh, right on top of that expo, opening up almost one half of the map. Uh, the king's gonna go over. I don't know that he gets the whole queen kill here. It looks like he dies a little bit sooner, but his barbarians are gonna go ahead finish the job, and uh, the queen is there, kind of doing some. Uh, some cleanup here, and I believe she's going to eliminate one of the double giant bomb positions uh, by clearing out some of those buildings. It's hard to say. Um, they, they got yeah. one single trip on the, the entry here, and then he just kind of sends 
almost like a four finger drop on the on the hogs, like a semi surgical. And they come in, uh, they get another single there, and they're pretty much standing in heels the entire time. Uh, they've got uh, the golem doing some tanking there for the hogs. Looks like four singles in this base, so it ends up being a fairly easy hog. Um, you know kind of clearing out half of the base with the queen and kill squad there and then a nice poison spell comes down at the end um, a little bit longer on that heel might have might have served him good but he's able to withstand uh, the king is going to take out uh, a good chunk of his hogs here but luckily uh, he's got the rest of his hogs over there at full life that did stand in that heel so rest is pretty much yeah. clean up i'll start to fast forward at this point yeah, it's nice. Uh, and again, you see they still got witches up, those skeletons in there. While those uh, golems were right there in the core, those skeletons were still being spawned, still doing a little tanking of, you know, of their own right. So I like them. Another thing I like about them is they're sort of like little fingers. If you get them in that jump spell, they'll sometimes one skeleton will run over and trigger a bomb that's sort of opposite of, of where your golems are going. So I, I like that addition. I think that was a nice attack. Absolutely. What's next? All right, I'm just moving down one. I'm going to watch Warren take on uh, 13. I'm not going to even try to say that name. I'm going to go ahead and start it up. Oops, I hit this. Yeah, I got started. <laughs> Ossetron. You, you can say the name. Yeah, there you go. There we go. Yeah, I had to find it. Uh, yeah, right here, uh, just starting off with a golem drop on the right side here. Again, I think this was a cleanup attack. In fact, I know it was. One interesting thing about this base, I had to show it, because uh, I know you've, you've joked about it before on my channel, is that uh, he had a hole in his base. And this was actually <laughs> one that I attacked and screwed up. And it almost worked in his favor. I mean, I don't encourage people putting a hole in their base, but it actually kind of threw us off. And this took a few times to get this this one done. Uh, but since that jump spell, no wall breakers needed here. Jump spell right in. And again, pretty pretty long push for the queen. You saw right there that uh, he dropped a barb over there or a goblin or something and triggered that giant bomb right in that hole. So he sort of threw away one giant bomb there. I used it for a lure. Uh, Warren just went without it. He just went no lure, dropped a nice rage for his, for his kill squad there. And then right here, boom, the king's on the queen. She's down. Now it's time to start the hogs. Uh, he just comes in with a really nice surgical, just working his way around the bottom of the base where he was had a lot of heavy uh, defenses. You see Tesla's pop in there, a lot of defenses in that one area. Spring's got him pretty good there, too. Um, I'm glad you pointed out the hole in the base, man, because I really let him have it on the stream. <laughs> we were doing well, a lot of last-minute base design, and uh, just yeah. we had this one and another one, actually, with a hole, and uh, just kind of slipped through the cracks. It it happens, and like I said, it, it actually sort of tr it, – it, it so much drew us wanting to come from there – that uh, it actually kind of messed up some attacks. Mine, I, we finally agreed that I wasn't going to do it. I came in on the top side, but I had a wall breaker fail, which basically completely eliminated any chance. And what was neat about this attack right here, you look at this right here where we're at. We're at a minute 20. He's got no heal spells left and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven defenses. I actually thought he was in trouble here, but it kind of got, got a nice little split on his hogs. Uh, the queen uh, is already down. I just thought, man, he's, he's in trouble. He's got some wizards working around the outside for cleanup. Uh, but the hogs just sort of make it happen. I don't. I really don't know how because there was a lot of point defense there. What I think really the main happened thing was was the the wizard towers. He cleared out all the wizard towers at the start, so everything was just hitting one hog at a time. There was nothing to do any splash damage with all those bombs already being triggered. Well, that and there was no spring traps, no bombs, nothing on the top half of that base. That was one thing I was telling you about off stream is that I noticed is that when you guys, and I'm going to start to fast forward times two here, uh, when you guys, we, we sort of caught on pretty early that a lot of your bases had uh, really trap heavy opposite the queen. So all we knew that all the traps were in that area and on the, on the queen side, it was very light on traps. So I think that was another factor too. He took out the trap heavy area and then at the end when he had no heels left, he, he had defenses to deal with, but wasn't losing any hawks or spring traps, wasn't getting triggered any bombs and just had enough to get the job done. I thought it was a really nice attack. Definitely. That's one thing you pointed out with our bases. Uh, we definitely learned a lot from you guys as far as base design. Um, you know, definitely we're thankful for the opportunity. We saw a lot of stuff that we really struggled with. So, um, you bet. that's funny that you showed an attack on Aussie and Venu. And the next one I'm going to show is an attack <laughs> by Aussie coming back with some retribution. Uh, so, uh, number 13, Ossitron is going to take out Hibble. And, uh, this was probably up there in my top three favorite attacks of the war, um, from, from both sides. Uh, the biggest key to this raid is going to come with a uh, stone goho, but the biggest key is the wall breaker that he's going to send in between these first two golems. He's going to send in a test wall breaker because it looks like it might be ripe for a trap, and then it gets nuked by that bomb. So had he sent all of his wall breakers there, it would have been a wall breaker fail, and this raid was over before it started. So you see him send in the, the three wall breakers after the fact. Mm -hmm. You know what? Yeah, there we go. 
Yeah, he got it. Boom. He had yeah, I was more. gonna say, am I am I saying the right thing? No. Uh, okay, so he gets the wall wall open, and uh, jump spell goes down to get to that queen, and uh, I believe that jump gets into that other compartment there with the new mechanics. It does slightly touch. Um, it's hard to say. Could have gone it, maybe a little bit farther. Yeah, he could have went a little more aggressive on that with the new mechanics, no question. But I think he gets there. Definitely. But he gets in. Um, he's able to take out the queen. I believe he gets the, the king as well. And uh, the hawks start to come in, you know, just surgical fashion. And the giants do a great job. They soak up damage from, from almost every single defense. The hogs are not getting touched at all. Uh, same thing on the top. Another giant comes in. The hogs still not getting touched. Um, finally starting to take some damage there on that front side with the hogs. But just, you know, nice, easy surgical fashion. And uh, he's being patient on the heal spells here, and uh, he's going to be able to cover probably the rest of the base with heals. Um, all the defenses, trips a couple singles there, doesn't do much to him. And uh, the, the golems there are tanking those final few defenses, and the hogs are going to run through it pretty much untouched. So the last heal goes down, and uh, all he has to get to is one more archer tower, and this is uh, uh, three star. So Yeah, honestly, that golem right there at the end, it was busting into golemites already, but it was was clutch right there. It was doing a lot of tanking for, I think, two or three point defense in that last compartment. Definitely. So he's got the wizard started on cleanup on the town hall. Um, Two stars in the bag here, and then uh, the the odds are going to run around the base. they got plenty of time to clean up. I'm just going to go ahead and four exit and uh, get through the raid. Ossetron puts three on the board for WHF. Very nice raid. We had this one go uh, early on in the war, so it kind of gave us a little bit of momentum. Yeah, that was a nice attack for sure. He was very, very patient with his heels. That was good. All right, moving on. Let's look at Arrow taking on 17 uh, Marto. I will say before started. you start that uh, this was probably my favorite attack of the war. Yeah, it was, it was really nice. The thing about this attack that I liked, one was just the army composition. It was a different army composition. But look at the base. You've got these four air defenses, and they're kind of skewed to one side. Now, the queen is on the complete opposite side, so that does give some cause for concern. Uh, but Peril just does a really good job sending in these these golems, sending in three golems. You want to do stoned. He knows he's got a big push to get through here. His goal is obviously to get all of those air defenses taken out uh, because you see he's got eight loons in the bag. And he did bring eight hogs as well. He's got a few. So bringing three golems and some witches uh, just hugely tank heavy, you know, really, really committing to that push to get to the opposite of the base. The pr jump spell was perfect. I mean, absolutely perfect. You see the queen's in that compartment now. Uh, the, the king is able to get there. They still have to be able to move up. Now, I think the king just went down right there. Uh, but the, the witches are still up. There's some wizards still up. The queen's still going. Uh, everything's moving through the base pretty well right here. And then, boom, right here, eight hogs on this side. His kill squad sort of left a few def uh, air defenses there. The queen just picked that last one up. Uh, but those hogs are going to nab that, and you see right there the defensive queen finally goes down. Those witches, those skeletons I was talking about, and the offensive uh, queen got in there, got it done. The only thing I would say about this attack that wasn't perfect, I think he was a little bit late on his he, on his balloons. Right here, he's got some going from the bottom, but I would have had all those other five going, you know, ten seconds ago. They oh, absolutely. Going in. Yeah. The hogs took care of the rest of the base. I mean, the loons at this point yeah. were unnecessary. I mean, they was already yeah. cooked. Yeah, but I that's just a it, testament to how bad he overkilled it. I mean, he completely yeah. crushed this base. Well, that, like I said, having three golems and those witches coming in, you see, he's still got witches up. I mean, that was huge. That is so much tanking power, and if you can keep them out in front uh, and there's not a lot of splash damage coming in on them, you're just going to crush it, which is exactly what Perro did. Just absolutely wreck that base. Check out how far the uh, the defensive queen came out from her platform, too, and jumped over that wall, allowing him to yeah. get that kill. So a little fortunate yeah. there, but hey. <laughs> You'll take it. Nice. You bet. It was nice. All right, man. What you got next? Cool. Very nice attack, Pero. Um, on our side, let's go down to number 23 on uh, switch sides F here. FB. On FB, uh, it's attacked by Dr. J. Murda. Right. And again, guys, more hogs. Sorry if it's getting redundant, but uh, we yeah, took what they gave us. Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, it was a very, very hog-friendly war, I will say that, and it, it kind of made some of our Laloon guys sad because we were, mm -hmm. <laughs> we kind of out in the cold, but uh, gets the yeah. four balloons out of the clan castle and has a couple giants that are going to walk just a couple tiles in front of those balloons. Um, you know, you see the Valks sometimes come, and they get, they get on the scene pretty quickly, and they might be already dead by the time the balloons arrive, but with the giants, uh, they do some tanking, and uh, it's a nice little touch because those balloons are going to get a couple drops off on the golems and get those taken care of pretty early. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that he dropped his golem so early when those balloons coming out because you knew that they was going to get, you know, they were going to get on those golems right away, which they did. I think they absolutely killed, well, maybe they didn't kill. How many did he bring? Two or one? 
Or two or three. Uh, looks like he brought three. Cause he's only got 21 Ooh, hogs. Going. Yeah. So he sends his hogs early. Look at how early he sends them. The queen yeah. still hasn't been taken care of, but he sees that the uh, the king and the golems are going to hit that jump spell any second. Ah, this scared me watching it live, man, but it ended up working out for him. The queen comes over here, locks onto the king. The king sees her. He's going to go over and uh, at least occupy her. She does take him out, hmm. but check this out. She locks on to the golem while the, the, <laughs> the friendly archer queen goes ahead, takes her out. The hogs are already working through the area. This ended up being, I think, the fastest attack of the war. Uh, simply because of how quickly he sent his hogs, not really waiting to get that uh, that queen down. So a little bit fortunate here, uh, but at the same time, it ended up working out in his favor, and he was able to pretty pretty much uh, crush the base. Well, I like those early hogs because, especially in this scenario, it was it was called for because those golems, the heroes, all that was doing some tanking for the hogs. So it was almost like a mini surgical on that on that start, uh, taking out some of those defenses so the the queen and the and other troops could move forward and get to that core. Definitely. I'm going to put it in 2x, but uh, it kind of works in your favor when you send the hogs early like that. I mean, you can't send them too early because, you you know, once that queen right. locks onto a hog, starts chasing them, you're in trouble. But when you send them early and everything's still alive, you've got a ton of tanking. Lovely poison spell here at the end, making sure that elixir pump isn't going to uh, produce any more elixir. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, nice work, Jay. Way to go, man. Yeah, def definitely a nice attack. All right, my last one. Let's look at Queen Cookie taking on 23 uh, Carnage. Start this up uh, but again, hogs. It is what it is, guys. Uh, this is what works, you know, when you're when you're dealing with these anti three star town hall nine bases. Uh, not that some of these couldn't be a lot alone, but it just this is this works better, I guess is what I'd say. Um, again, same scenario here. If you look at the angle that Cookie's taken, it is sort of a long uh, travel to the queen. But again, we sort of knew that's what we had to do to get into some of those bomb positions. Uh, this base actually didn't even really have good bomb positions over by the queen. So when you're doing a hog attack and you're bringing a, a shattered or anything like that, a stoned or, or cold blooded, if you can get away with it, uh, getting those, getting a, a set or two of bombs, at least a, a possible spot eliminated is pretty huge. You'll see the CC troops coming out right here, drops a nice rage for the queen and for the kill squad. Uh, wounds and dragon, they get taken out pretty quickly. The king's out front and then right here, he's going to lock on to that defensive queen as soon as some of those skeletons go down right there. He's on. Uh, so step one's pretty much complete, and the queen is at full health. Hasn't been touched yet. Hogs are already going in. Nice job getting that double trip there by that kill squad and uh, on that deep push. Uh, very nice job. And then he had a single trip on that bottom side as well. So very yeah, little so bomb threat at all. And he's still got two heals in the bag. Well, and if you'll watch, as I said before, watch this again. You'll see a couple of hogs go flying. You do have the one bomb there. Uh, but once they get to the sort of this back side of the base, the sort of the invited side where uh, you could tell that Carnage wants them to come from, you'll stop seeing hogs go flying. There's no more uh, There's no more bombs. It's sort of, even though he's only got one heal spell left, he's going to be okay with this number of hogs. Definitely. Pretty much just wrecks the base, though. Uh, nice attack to Cookie there. Yeah, we'll go for times two here because the... Uh, just the last defense going down right there. Now, the uh, queen is down here, so that, that cannon did take her out, uh, but not a lot of base left and quite a few hogs. When you've got that many hogs left and no giant bombs to worry about, uh, pretty much GG. Definitely. When you're working in uh, you know a no-lure type of raid, um, when you end up with a minute and a half left on the clock and 20 hogs left alive, you're going to be all right. All right. Good job, Cookie. All right. All man, right. What's your last one? My last one. <laughs> Oh my god, did we save the best for last? Probably not, but it is me, yours truly, Power <laughs> Bang. Um, attack on 25, uh, tier lock. All right, so I hit the play button here, and uh, this was a cleanup attack, and drawing your attention to the upper right side with the Builder Hut and the air defense, uh, there was a double giant bomb there that roasted Jiggy Fly's uh, initial raid on this, and he ended up with a 97% two-star. So I essentially just copied his raid, um, I dropped a rage spell for the opening, uh, you know, spell here, and it, I opted for a heal instead. But basically, the stone go ho get three golems coming in with a jump spell. Didn't have to fool with the wall breakers. Really like raids where you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about, you know, the screwy AI these days with, uh, you know, the wall breakers targeting different spots on the wall and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, three golems out front, plenty of tanking power for a dragon and loon, and then just kind of letting the uh, um, the queen do her work. Uh, double jump spell goes down. It's going to get me access to the, the enemy Archer Queen, as well as the other double giant bomb set, which is next to the Tesla that just popped there on the left. So I'm just going to clear that Tesla out, and that will remove the pathing uh, to that double set. And uh, the Queen's going to hop in, take out the Queen. And at this point, just kind of drop in uh, 
surgical fashion hogs here. A little sloppy on the front side with my heels. Um, see here. So we got the hogs working in, but check out the uh, the two hogs I sent from the spawn point all the way up to that DGB position. Mm -hmm. Get both like of them that. triggered and then uh, still have hogs coming in uh, from the top and with the heel left that I can drop in between the hogs that I dropped on the back side and the ones coming in from the front side. So they're all going to converge on that, uh, get healed up for the final push, and uh, you know, pretty much GG from this point. I uh, just have to get over to that final cannon. I've got wizards on both ends uh, clearing up the, the trash on their way around the base, and that queen's going to do her thing in the middle, and the hogs are just going to clean this up. Got a little bit excited on stream on this one. I don't know if anybody uh, heard me screaming. <laughs> I wasn't... But... I wasn't there for that one, but uh, that's that's awesome. It's always fun to get a three star in a in a tough war like this. It makes you feel good. I know it, uh, and I like the double jump. I like the two hogs that come over and triggered the bomb. That was all really really nice. Definitely. Uh, few, few I was pumped up, up for this one, man, because there was like eleven hundred people on the stream, and you know it can be a little nerve wracking when oh, you get that yeah. many people watching you live for sure. You bet. You bet. You, you fail, and you got to answer up to it. You know, for everybody right there then and there. So. Uh, anyways, that's going to do it uh, for our side uh, for this war, but just wanted to say to you guys, Jake, uh, we had an absolute blast this war, the guys over at WHF, um, you know, a lot of respect for One Hive, the, the things that you stand for, um, we learned a lot from this war, and we're going to, you know, take some things back, especially on the base building end, uh, going forward to hopefully give some guys uh, a little bit more of a challenge when taking on our 10 hall uh, 9 bases for sure. Well, coming from One Hive, uh, you guys were all class acts. It was a pleasure to war you. All uh, gentlemen and ladies over at, at Wizard on Our Face, all you guys are just great. Uh, we had fun. We'll do it again in the future. And I hope the viewers like this. Uh, the, the, some guys asked for it. You got it. I hope you liked it. hope you liked the back and forth. Uh, Power Bang and I doing this together. So uh, for all the One Hive guys out there, if you haven't checked out Power Bang, be sure to go do it. Um, you know, good channel, good good content. I think you'll like it. Uh, and I hope you like this war. We want to do more of like this stuff for you guys. It's It actually takes a lot of work and it's hard to do, but we will do our best to keep it coming. Absolutely. And for those over at uh, Power Bang Gaming, if you guys have not seen the One Hive Raids YouTube channel, go do that immediately. Excellent content coming from Jake. Uh, you know, uploads daily. Um, fantastic stuff over there, so be sure to subscribe to him if you have not done so already. But th thanks again for the opportunity, Jake. Um, go ahead and do your sign-off for me, uh, Power Bang representing the good guys. Uh, we'll do this again soon in the future uh, with One Hive and some other clans out there um, that are uh, hoping to find a good fair play matchup. All right, guys, until next time, Jake from One Hive reminding you guys to suck less. Thanks so much guys for checking out my video. If you feel like you learned something here today and you're a better attacker for having watched it, your clanmates will probably feel the exact same way. So do me a favor, share this video with them, get them to the channel, and chances are your clan's going to be exploding for three stars from top to bottom before you know it. Thanks and we'll catch you next time.